Are you the next victim? Or maybe you're already a victim and you don't even know it yet. I've known for quite some time now that something is wrong, okay? Something feels off. And maybe you've known it too, or you felt it, but you couldn't quite pinpoint what the issue is. People living in fear, taught to stay silent, well, it seems like the world is more dangerous than ever. You see it every day, at the grocery store, on public transit, your workplace, and even in places where you are taught to feel safe, or at least you send your kids hoping that they will feel safe there. I'm talking about school. Both kids and adults are scared, and quite often, there's actually a very good reason to be, okay? People are scared to act. They're scared to stand up for others, but what's even worse is they're scared to stand up for themselves. Now, I had a conversation recently which put a few things into perspective for me, okay? And it almost made me think that people are taught to be scared and not to stand up for themselves at a very young age. Now, I wouldn't go as far as saying that people are taught or trained to be victims, but you tell me what you think, okay? Now, I got to say that this topic, it can be delicate or disturbing. All right. I've been around police officers my entire life, okay? I've mentioned this before. I've made videos. I come from a real-life Blue Bloods family. But even in working in schools as a cop for many years, I didn't, I'm surprised I didn't come to this realization earlier. I've seen horrific incidents personally in schools, okay? And it's frustrating. But there's a parallel with the way that some of these kids who are genuine victims of violence or intimidation act and the way adults who are the genuine victims of violence and intimidation act. And it's actually sad as all hell to see. Now, I had a conversation with a teacher who's been teaching about 25 years now, okay? They were filling me in on a situation. Somebody in the class is a bully, assaulting the other kids, spitting on the other kids, assaulting teachers by kicking them, spitting on them, even spit at a police officer who showed up uh, when the kid took off one day and was running away from the school, okay? There's mental health issues, and there's a full-time EA in the class basically assigned to this kid. But they're continually assaulted as well. Now, I need to mention this kid is in grade three, okay? This isn't high school. Grade three. Teachers have absolutely had it with this kid. The EA has had it. They're stressed out. And nobody wants to deal with them. Admin at the school is aware, but it seems like the schools won't do anything at all. Admin gets the superintendents involved, the school board, but the kid's still in class, okay? This is all well-documented. Procedures have been followed. And this is where it gets sad. Some of the other kids in the class are scared, visibly. They shake when this kid's acting up. They're forced to watch and they're told to sit back and do nothing. Some of them, it's affected their performance at school. Their grades are going down. They can't concentrate on their schoolwork. One kid since the, start of, since the beginning of the school year has even started wetting themselves, okay? When this other kid is acting up, in their pants. I mean, the poor little kids, they can't process this. Nobody wants to make eye contact with the troubled kid because they're scared he'll target them next, even in the hallway. Nobody wants to be the person that he hones in on for whatever reason. It seems like this behavior is tolerated at the expense of the other kids. So what does this have to do with you? The adults. I drive, okay, but whenever I'm in the city, I take public transit, the train or the subway. It's faster, and I just hate dealing with traffic, okay? Every time I ride public transit, I see at least one person in distress. And that's a low estimate, okay? It's probably tens or dozens. And sure, often it's mental health related, but there's also drug-induced psychosis, people who just had enough and maybe they're pissed off. I mean, that's actually relatable. I make videos about this type of thing where I showed people passed out, high, commuters walking around them. I've done media interviews about it. If you take public transit at all, you know what I'm talking about, okay? But every single time I'm on the subway, for example, I see somebody in distress or having an episode. Yelling or screaming at themselves or at others, getting in people's faces. I've seen people urinate in the corner on the train and... In the evening, the issues are completely different as well. You got groups of guys, they might be leaving the, the game, they're hammered, they've been drinking, and now they're on the train, okay? And it's not good drinking, okay? Because their team lost. I guess they're on the train, they're not driving, drunk driving, which is good, but they're yelling, they're looking to take out their frustration, and maybe it'll be on a window or some other inanimate object, but maybe not. Maybe it'll be a person, maybe you. This happens every single weekend, okay? I'm not making this stuff up. If you pay attention at all, you'll know that this is happening. So, I mean, what do you do? You sit there, just like the kids. You try to ignore what's taking place, 
act like you don't know what's happening around you, which can even be more dangerous. You don't want to look startled. You don't really want to look at them. And I mean, you certainly don't want to make eye contact because if they see you looking at them, then they might focus on you again, for whatever reason, they might hone in on you. And now you become the target of assault or humiliation. It's just like you were taught in school. While this, it seems like this type of behavior is tolerated again and again. Adults have wet themselves while they sit there as well. Scared, okay? I've seen it. I've personally seen it. They're embarrassed to get up after because people will know. And do you know how sad that is? Listen, it rips me apart on the inside, but it also makes me angry. So these individuals who have been caught time and time again for the same violent offenses and released time and time again, they walk among us, okay? They're everywhere. As a police officer who's released hundreds of people over the years, it actually surprised me how many uh, violent offenders are just walking among us, okay? While everybody else is just completely unaware. It, it actually did surprise me. When I got on, when I was hired as a police officer, of course, you're privy to a little bit more information that the public isn't always aware of. I was actually genuinely shocked at how many violent offenders walk among, uh, amongst us. Violent or even worse, and there is worse. Take that however you want. Every now and then, you would release somebody because you have to. And then you're just left there thinking, this doesn't feel right. When you see these things online, people expose, it almost makes you happy that some drunk guy got caught because at least there's some sort of retribution, call it what you want, because people are taking photos and video which are posted online. Next thing you know, the guy's publicly shamed and ends up losing his job because he's not a good representation of the organization's uh, values, okay? We see this all the time. But for the most part, that's not the case. It's people in crisis or their behavior is affected by drugs or alcohol, there's mental health concerns. And it's also important to note that not everybody who is in crisis is violent, okay? And that is important. Listen, I don't even like making these videos sometimes because it's like I'm stating a problem without offering up any real solution on how to fix the problem. Some of these issues, they're not just gonna go away with the stroke of a pen, okay? Changing one law or procedure. Some of these issues, they're systemic. I even started this video by stating that people are acting exactly how they were taught in kindergarten to act. Just sit there or stand there scared, hoping that they're not the next victim. There's a direct parallel that you see everywhere. Somebody standing at the grocery store belittles a, uh, an employee at the cash register. Most people are just going to stand there, basically happy that at least it's them, it's not me. So what can I offer you in this video then? Well, basically the same as the other videos, get involved. Make your voice heard. Politics isn't boring anymore, okay? There is far too much going on for it to be boring. There's Facebook groups. Understand how lobbying works. Get involved in groups so big that they can't be ignored by politicians. And a good group, too, that can articulate their ideas well, not just come up with some, ah, the hell with them, throw them all in prison, because that's not the answer either, okay? Yeah, we need prison reform, bail reform, health care reform, education reform, drug, policing reform. Just fixing one and ignoring the others, it won't make a bit of difference. If you have any thoughts or ideas, I would love to hear them. People are paying attention, okay? And they're paying attention to the comments, which is important. I also read every single one of them and I respond when it's appropriate to do so. Listen, folks, thanks again for watching. Be safe out there. Look after one another and I'll see you in the next video.